need to craft more soup. More soup. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Date and I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to 60 Parsecs. We're still stuck on a robot planet. I guess we're trying to like colonize the robot planet or something like that. There's this guy that keeps calling. He's like, hey, you got the sock puppet? And I didn't twice. But now I got a sock puppet, so hopefully he's gonna call again. Please. Captain, our systems are working below optimal levels. I was able to determine that our wiring might be at fault. I suggest you take a look under the proverbial hood and fix the wires before a malfunction occurred. The wires are stuffed in a dark corner, tangled and dusty. You'll have to figure out this out by yourself. I trust your instincts. Not that I have a choice. We'll use agility, because obviously Dee Dee's agility is fucking through the roof. Baby's still out on expedition. We're crafting a first aid kit for Emmett. And, uh, <clears throat> hopefully it's all going to go well. Hopefully. Nobody seems to really need the sock puppet. It's not necessary for mental health needs, uh, as far as I can tell. I just need it for that, that guy who keeps calling. Please. Please. I need to, to have that event again. Nice one, Captain. You dove deep in the sea of cables, swiftly untangling them and reconnecting them all in the right places. I'm sure you knew what you were doing all along and didn't just get lucky. Right, Captain? The ship systems are once again working at optimal capacity. You have nothing to worry about, for now at least. Feeling hungry, Emmett's hungry, everybody's fucking hungry. Fresh and soup to all. Enjoy. Last night I was browsing through some designs of beautiful machines. Never you mind why. <laughs> Robopawn! Now pay attention, I found a food dispensing machine on board. All shuttles in the Astro Citizen program were equipped with one. Ours is missing a lever, but apart from that it seems functional. It's hardly rocket science, it's, so you should manage to fix it. But how? Don't have a shovel, don't have tape. We are fucked. No free food for me! That's alright. I'll live, I suppose. I really would like a shovel, though. Hey, baby's back! I held a vote when you were asleep, and I won. One to zero. Vendi, the machine, I mean, had to go. She would have driven me crazy with her limited programming and constant food queries. There's no reason for you to be mad. She wasn't giving up the soup rations to you, either. If you look through the airlock, you can still wave goodbye to her as she floats away. <laughs> this guy's evil. Uh, th or this machine, rather. Of course, if you're unhappy with the assortment of machines that populate the ship, you're free to file a complaint form number THX1138. Your objection will be considered as soon as you reach a new home world, you ungrateful bastard. <laughs> Baby came back from the nearby robot village. The place isn't big, just a few streets and a few dozen robotic families at most, all of them peaceful. Anyway, Baby's state mental state is a little fragile. He's famished, and his mental state's questionable. Maybe got a few lungfuls of some thick smoke coming from some heavy machinery. Could be bad news. Maybe he walked through the village with his nose buried in the handbook until he looked straight into a puddle of something green and slimy. Yuck. Well, that's chemicals. We got some. Maybe found some small dusty rocks and even a few gem behind the robotic houses. Good. Inhabitants of the village were kind enough to give Baby directions to the bomb craters and robot statue. Where does all this soup come from? It's the greatest mystery of the universe. And everything. But anyway, Baby came back carrying some rations. Baby was pleasantly surprised by this trip. The automatons might keep their distance a little, but they're friendly enough. That's good news. Emmett is still weak. Our communications array has intercepted a number of transmissions that are referencing a crass space vessel. They might be referencing our ship, Captain. That's okay. That's just fine. Let me get this guy his first aid kit. And, uh, can we craft some stuff? Oh, we can craft some tape, we can craft a mask. I'm gonna craft a tape. I need that. Captain, remember that transmission we received? Whoever sent it must still be waiting there. Transmission keeps reminding the listeners to bring a sock puppet with them. They still have not explained why. If you want to head out, you better grab that sock. Alright. I got it. I'm going. I'm good. Everybody's tired or weak, so I can't send anybody on an expedition quite yet. But that's okay. Everything's alright. Rendezvous! You approach the location, held up the sock puppet on one hand, and exclaimed, exclaimed, I come in peace! A small metal figure stepped out from behind a rock. Her name was she Sheila. Yeah. Sheila is what I'll call her. <laughs> and her disappointed look made it obvious that she was expecting someone else entirely. Alas, you're not handsome. Uh, you are not a handsome young robot named Dumbo. 
Sheila, or easier on your human ears and eyes, Sheila. Yeah, exactly. I can read Leet, okay? Laments a glitch that occurred in her programming, making her fall in love with young Dumbo, despite both of them already having different companions assigned by the planet system. Sheila believes Dumbo's programming is not flawed, and he cannot return her feelings. You seemed really moved by this tragic love story. Me? Not so much. Alright, tape available. Everybody's rested up and looking good. Await information from Sheila. Alright, we can do that. Let's get some more shit crafted. Mask, sock, lighter. Let's do the mask. Sounds like a good plan. And uh, Emmett, it's your turn to go. So why don't you head out to the museum? See, he likes these these brainy places. I sent her to the library. I sent her to the museum. I'm a good captain. Um, you can bring your book and the communicator. That's a good idea. Captain, my weather systems are detecting a storm on the horizon. It's moving fast, but it will hopefully pass by tomorrow. This one could get nasty. Thunder, lightning, gale force winds, sharp objects howling at you from every which way. I'd like to keep monitoring the storm's movement throughout the night, but doing so will require my sensors to run on battery, as it's unadvisable to leave the main generator reactor on through a storm. What do you want to do? Uh, I'll use the battery, I guess. That's fine. A storm sounds dangerous. I don't want to get involved in none of that. Save me. Save me, ship. Shiphead. You ran the weather monitoring systems on battery power. The storm moved south and you were spared by the worst of it. By morning it had completely passed. Oh, don't you love the smell after it rains? And the battery broke. <laughs> you spent the morning sifting through washed up junk piles, but it was mostly just waterlogged crap. Crap, you did find a lighter though. Sweet, we don't need to craft that then. Emmett went off to pay a visit to Robotofu's museum, first and only museum. While you worry about a safe return, I will make some space on my hard drive for new information about this mysterious planet. Baby is still loyal, got that mask, everybody's asking for soup. Alright, here's your fucking soup, alright? Don't ask me for nothing else. We could craft the sock puppet, and I think I have enough to do the first aid kit after. Sweet. Ma'am, something has infected Backy, my backup AI module. Perhaps it's interference from somewhere on this planet. Frankly, Backy needs a reboot. He's overloading the fan system. Someone agile should leap up and... Hi, folks! It's too warm in this tin can, and Backy's here to fix it! I'll become your biggest fan! Ha <laughs> ha! Dee Dee's agile. She'll be able to do that, no problem. Get at him, dawg. Yeah! She was a good pick. She's a good pick for Captain. Awesome. Awesome work, everybody. When a malfunctioning backy took control, crewmate Bronco gave you a boost while you shoved some armor into the fan system, rapidly revolving rotor blades. God damn, we broke our armor? I guess not. I must keep a tighter leash on him. He's more of a superficial intelligence, but don't say that to his face. He also has a really fragile ego. Alright, nobody's hungry, mentally stable, good job. Captain, a hole appeared right next to our shuttle overnight. It's producing smelly vapors and a nasty gurgling. While it's not an immediate threat, I'd appreciate it if you made it stop. The smell is foul, the noise is annoying, and both offend my sensors. Alright, I'll use the tape. That's fine. We can craft some more if we need to. And I should have a sock puppet by tomorrow. Sweet. Everything's going great. Hopefully Sheila's gonna... Uh-oh. Looks like Baby went insane. Okay, I take it all back. The sock puppet is uh, needed at some points. I appreciate Baby taping over the hole in the ground. You congratulated him, but realized the hole was actually a mouth. Camouflage creatures gobbed, gaped open, and his thrashing gave you a fright. Problem solved. Now, about your deteriorated mental health. Well, sorry about this, Baby. Hopefully he doesn't, like, eat the sock puppet or something. Seeing as humans are slaves to emotions, I do understand why Sheila came back to get your advice on her romantic quest. Is there any way to make a different robot love her unconditionally, or is it possible for her to get rid of her defective feeling module altogether? Now's the time to reconnect with your basic human instincts. What do you feel is the best approach to effectively resolving Sheila's situation? I can't really tell which is which. Strength might be to get another robot to love her unconditionally? I have about the same chance either way, so I'll just go with agility, like we do. And I should probably get that first aid kit crafting as well. Excellent. I expect uh, Emmett should be back tomorrow, perhaps. 
Let's see. You never know. Mm, fingers crossed. Nope. Together with Sheila, you decided that the best course of action will be to fix the malfunction causing her to love Dumbo. The sh that should remove the problem altogether. Perhaps she'll have no memories of this romance at all if done correctly. I have to say, Captain, messing with a robot's programming like this is risky business, especially considering that this society already has matchmaking rules in place. You might want to start looking around for spare tools and parts. I'm sure Sheila's going to need a few things to complete the procedure. Alright, Captain is also hungry. Captain will eat. Gather some tools for the procedure. Shit, what kind of tools? It's not very specific. An alien vessel is approaching. Their ship is rigged with a light show synced to music. They started blasting as soon as we opened comms, Captain. They're playing Rockabilly. Baby's already grooving to the beat. The aliens claim to be of the Dance Lord tribe, and they're searching for the best dancers in the galaxy. They've challenged our tribe to a dance-off, specifically a sock-hop. If you don't accept, they'll vaporize us with their ultra-high-frequency speakers. How will you defeat the Dance Lords? Agility! Every time! Make it happen! Make it happen, Cap'n! Like we always do with this time! Maybe we'll win something. Or die. You never know. You accepted the Dance Lords challenge. They beamed you and Baby into their ship, and you sock hopped straight to the leader, Warbop. But he was no match for your wicked footwork and synchronized snapping. Warbop acknowledged your stills and let you go with his blessing. He even refilled our supply of chemicals. The sock hop ended with everyone sipping non-alcoholic fruit punch from a big glass bowl. Captain, I think you've been practicing your moves in the mirror. Emmett returned from his walk outside. He showed up exhausted, starved, and quite stressed out. His visit to the museum was reg rather educational. Did you know the inhabitants of this planet were actually created by a different race that lived here before them? Don't you wonder what happened to them? A few incredibly violent pictures and records shocked Emmett so much that he started backing away, stumbled, and suffered a painful fall. Emmett showed his trusty handbook to the museum custodian. The robot flipped through the pages with little excitement and pointed to an illustration in the book, then nodded towards something that looked like a drinking fountain, but filled with weird chemicals and oils. Emmett scored some resources from a trash can behind the museum. Hey, don't judge him. He seems proud. This trip was definitely educational. It's clear the history of life on this planet, orga organic or otherwise, reaches back further than human history. I found it especially interesting that there was violence here once, just not anymore. Humans can learn a thing or two from these automatons. Alright. Baby would like to eat something. Well, we don't we didn't get any food from the museum, so I'm I'm sorry. I don't want to send him out while he's still hungry. Alright. Have you looked in the mirror recently, Captain? I couldn't help but notice that you've been afflicted with a rash of some sort. I hope it's nothing serious, but we can't rule it out. Rule out it being a symptom of a serious illness. You can never be too careful. I strongly suggest that you do something about the rash. I swear I'm not the only one worried about your health. It's really not how about how weird you look right now. I'll, I'll look up in the book. Uh, maybe maybe something in the book. The book. The book can help me. And baby's gonna start starving in a couple days, so we need to get Emmett back out there ASAP. Hello there, Captain. You're looking very rested today. I can see that you found a way to deal with that mysterious rash that was bothering you earlier, and it consumed the entire book. That sucks. You couldn't figure out what the cause was, but at least you found instructions on how to treat it in your Astro Citizen handbook. It didn't have a name, so you gave it one. Cap Captania Uglinosa. <laughs> Ugliosa. <laughs> how thoughtful of you. Baby's still complaining about lack of rations, and we got a first aid kit, so that's good. We need to craft another sock, and then we'll get the rations going. Actually, we should do the rations first, I think. We received a pamphlet on our window. Try Ebos Ebosin. Ebosin. Universal shopping with the from the comfort of your own planet. Free gift with sign up. Wow, neat. The Ebosin Networks lets you order pretty much anything except food and water, and it will arrive via portal within one to two galactic business days. There's a catch, though. The account creation process requires you to jump through some hoops. I mean, literally. You have to jump through a string of temporal portals to become verified. The fine print says there's no risk of death or dismemberment, but insanity is possible. How do you want to tackle this? Agility! And Emmett can go to... the robot statue. You'll enjoy that, won't you, boy? Sure will. Um... Let's see... I guess maybe bring the artifact and the communicator. 
That'll do. And we're cooking up some food for baby, so don't you worry. Don't start starving on me. Everything's gonna be just fine, I promise. I promise! You're gonna do great! You're gonna do big things, boy! You touched the floor and quickly sprinted through the e and sign-up portal, disappearing into a dimension breach with a flash of blue lightning. The shuttle rocked and popped you out the other side of the portal unharmed. The fine print of the pam pamphlet expanded to show that it would take one to two galactic business days for your verification to process, at which time you could begin your universal shopping experience. The pamphlet then expanded again to define one galactic business day as 525,600,000 minutes, or 1,000 Earth years. Finally, the pamphlet scanned the, sh scanned the shuttle to see if you qualified for the promised free gift and determined you did not. When you asked why not, the pamphlet said you had violated the terms of service, but refused to explain further. Then it vanished in the cloud of annoying paradoxes. Emmett left for a walk around the robot statue. Let's just hope it's not a sightseeing trip. Extra supplies are always welcome. Baby is starving. Damn, I'm gonna have to make him even another soup. Another soup. Another one. Sheila the robot is currently trying to gather some mechanical parts and tools to help her fix the inconvenient glitch. She's hoping to get some rid of her unreciprocated feelings towards some robot fellow named Dumble as soon as possible. Do you have anything that she could use? Yeah, whatever you want, bro. Here, take this. Take this! It's good for you. I got some tools. Just don't come to me asking for a shovel, because I don't know how the fuck to get one, or make one, or whatever. Good thinking, Captain. A lighter can be used in many different ways, such as soldering two stray cables together, or burning a big hole in something. Sheila was grateful, so I'm sure she could find a good use for it. Of course, if you want to tamper with delicate nanoprocessors, it's best to use high-quality precision tools, but this will have to do for now. I should warn you, Captain, this society might not look favorably on outsiders interfering with a robot's mechanisms, even for good reasons. Sheila's really counting on you, though. Well, it's, uh, it's just how it goes. It's just how it goes sometimes. I need to craft more soup. More soup. I'm detecting a huge energy surge beneath the surface, seismic waves. I think there's an earthquake coming. The shuttle's sturdy, but this ground isn't. Soil has a high potential to liquefy when the earthquake hits. There's a better patch of rocky ground a few yards ahead. You could use the shuttle's thrusters to scoot onto it, but if you overshoot, you'll be on even worse ground than you are now. Will you attempt the maneuver? Of course. Am I just gonna sit here with my dick in my hand? I mean, my vagina in my hand? <laughs> I don't know what's going on! Did we do it? Did we succeed? Can we please succeed? And Sheila, don't come back asking me for more lighters and shit. Use the shuttle's thrusters to scoot onto a better patch of ground, coming to rest on the edge of the rocky soil the moment the earthquake hit. For a few nightmare seconds, the shuttle bucked to and fro like a bad atmospheric entry, but the shaking stopped and you opened your eyes, and the strangest silence followed, and then you laughed. Emmett found his way back from the robot statue. He's really tired, and is asking if somebody could warm up some soup for dinner. He looks a little confused. Emmett earned some bruises while climbing the tall statue. Ouch. You didn't have to climb it, bro. As usual, Emmett searched the location for anything uh, useful. Sure enough, a few unusual rocks were found. Emmett found a lighter during this trip. It seems to be in pristine condition. Who transported these outside the solar system? So strange. Anyways, Emmett came back carrying rations. Emmett says the statue was built some centuries ago to commemorate an important moment in history. What? It, what is that moment? Alright, whatever. Whatever! Captain needs some rations. We have a good amount of rations, so, uh... Are you hungry? Are you hungry, fella? There we go. You can get some food in ya. That's fine. Baby's loyal. I think we need to use this first aid kit on Emmett. And then I can, uh, craft a new first aid kit? Well, not yet. We'll do the sock puppet first. Because I gotta use this first aid kit before I can fucking craft a new one, so... Whatever! While doing a routine cleanup of my database, I came upon a blueprint for a device called a flux capacitor. If installed, it might allow us to find our way home. However, it needs to be assembled. Will you attempt to s assemble the flux capacitor? Um... In episode 1, our home planet was exploded. I don't think this is a good idea, but we'll see what happens. Marty McFly would appreciate it. Uh, who's going on the expedition? Baby Bronco! You're up! You're going to the bomb craters. Why do I send him to the shitty places? 
I guess because Emmett did all the work to get us to this planet. Alright. We'll see how it goes. Maybe bring, uh... Oh, you're gonna need this mask. That's for sure. Bring the mask and the armor. Hopefully nothing bad's gonna happen to us while we uh, are waiting here. Maybe he should bring the fucking gun, too. I don't know. Ah, it's gotta be fine. It's gotta be great! Every everything's awesome. Hooray! Damn, I got caught up in this episode. I didn't even notice the time. Shit. Day 40! You were trying to assemble the flux capacitor yesterday, and things went terribly wrong. One false move caused the contraption to explode. You got injured, but thankfully you weren't teleported anywhere. Or when, any when. Baby left to explore a bunch of holes in the ground. Riveting. Hmm. I'm injured now. God damn. I don't want the captain to die. Well... I suppose that's about all for this episode, friends. I sincerely hope that you have enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that little bell notification thing because apparently subscribing doesn't mean anything anymore. I would appreciate all of those things. Also, if you really want to make my day, check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Big shout out to Nico the Legend and MMX Akira for their current support on Patreon. Those boys, my heroes. We'll get back to 60 parsecs relatively shortly. I gotta call it for for the day, but um, yeah. I sat down, recorded a good chunk. It's looking like we might be able to make our way back home, or at least out of the situation we're in. We just have to await more information from Sheila, and, you know, give her the shit that she asks for. So, I could do that. I could do all that. I just need to repair this, uh, this battery. I'm sure that's going to come in useful. Anyways... Once again, friends, this has been 60 Parsecs. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one, friends! And until then, bye bye One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.